where we talk, we listen, and we learn about food security. So today I want you to think, think food. We will think about GTA, GTA Africa where you think food. Our theme today focuses on food and agriculture. And the reason why this is a big uh, point of looking into is because if you read the daily really budget, there's always a page about food security. There is always Taking the flag and 
taking it higher and higher. We know that the whole farmers are already, their time is already going, and um, we are here to stay, and I'm so excited by how we are responding to this. Now, if mentorship was there, what do you think would have happened? 
he would have actually gotten someone to put him through maybe some of the challenges a poultry farmer is supposed to to expect and all of that so lack of mentorship was a new one they introduced and that the two um, commonly celebrated um, challenges which is lack of finance and lack of um, um, land access to land that is a major one because most of the land transfer system we have in Africa is true, probably inheritance or when you have money to go to buy to buy a plot of land or an acre of land. So the problem has become politicians. Sorry, I hope we don't have any of them. <laughs> they have actually complicated the issue. Most of them come from the city. They go to the rural areas where we, where we practice most of the farming activities and buy the land and just press it and leave it there. So youth don't have access to this land, we don't have enough money to purchase this land, so it becomes a great challenge for someone that actually wants to grow something on the sweat, someone that doesn't have the um, advanced um, technique of going into electronics and the rest. So another one is um, lack of finance. You know, the ridiculous um, collateral charged by banks is they are actually funny. <laughs> What is the best approach that we have to Right, like um, Mr. Lapp said, I think after training, uh, first of all, uh, you need to you know, begin a business. You must begin a business from, uh, you know, uh, learning from someone else. It's a, the best thing is to learn from uh, someone who's been here before. So, right from uh, maybe our education system, we need to have a system where children can be taught how to embrace agriculture by having a positive mindset towards agriculture. So embrace agriculture right from childhood, then continue with that practice through your uh, your adulthood. And uh, once that mentorship period is, uh, once you go through that mentorship, you're able to suffice, or you're able to, you know, you're able to overcome the challenges that are facing during agriculture. So I think the best approach is training, uh, incorporate agriculture with much more emphasis on research, on uh, funding, on I mean, take uh, agriculture. Not just as a as a bike way. Okay. We need to start taking agriculture as a major economic, uh, major economic, sorry, a major economic um, platform for young people, yes. and not only young people, but for the society in general. So we need to give more uh, the government and also uh, private stakeholders need to give more emphasis on agriculture in terms of uh, teaching uh, in the schools, also supporting young uh, beginners, supporting research for 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 agriculture. Thank you for that. Um, so we have this, the whole food supply chain. We have from the harvesting to storage and every other thing. What are some of the hotspots that things can be made? Because I know that some people like going up to the farm, but people handle it along the food chain. So where are other places where the culture is wide? Where, which spots can you tell any youth outside there to engage in? Okay, I will take the case of Kenya now. You know, I was actually surprised when I, I got to, I came here in 2017 and I've been here since then. Okay, I've been going and coming. So I was actually surprised that um, even though you produce, we produce, I'm a Kenya now, mm -hmm. so we produce a lot of potatoes here, but um, we don't do enough with it. Do you know that we can actually make porridge, potato porridge from potatoes? Yeah, we can make potato <laughs> flour, we can make... So one of the hotspots along the um, supply chain that I think um, we as Kenyan, Kenyan youth can tap into is the processing. We produce maize here and there are a lot of things we can do with maize. You can make pap from maize. In Nigeria we make pap from maize. You can make um, even cake. We have this maize cake. You can make cake from maize. Beans, you can make beans cake. You can make a lot of things from other products. All these ones that we already have, not talk of the offer ones now. Now, I want to leave the offer ones out. From the current one we are already producing, are we actually doing enough with them? There are so many opportunities, untapped opportunities in these areas that we have not exploited. So we have, we as youth, because we, I know that we are creative, we are innovative, we just have to think and think about what we can do, how we can add value to all these commodities, to actually attract the international market. For example, now if you start producing potato flour, don't you think that the global community will adopt it? 
So there are a lot of these opportunities that we as youth are not even seeing. Now let me talk about the orphan crops now. There are some crops that have been declared orphan. You know when I, the first time I heard about that, I was like, <laughs> what is orphan again? <laughs> we have about more than 100 of them. You can go to the World um, Agroforestry Center, you will see the list of this crop. And we can plant those crops here. And it will attract the international market. Not only the local market now, but also the international market. Uh, you know, potatoes, oh, there were, let's say 100, 100 uh, seeds of potatoes. Mm -hmm. I could still plant the same in a rented house like this, then have layers of uh, layers of, of, of you know like trees so trees. I have a layer here and then another layer and you find that instead of planting 100 I'll plant let's say 2000 so vertical farming is also another trend that is coming up and uh, I think it hasn't been very well explored in Kenya so it's one thing we need to know how can we you know explore vertical farming because you find there is land but land is not enough like you say uh, I'm coming out of school and I don't have money to buy land so what do I do? I could talk to my dad maybe I can build a, a, a vertical farm and apart from that, there is also roof, rooftop uh, farming. Yeah. So instead of me keeping quiet and waiting for when the government going to give me a job, I could use I could use the rooftop we have a place to plant something. And before you know it, I'll build a greenhouse and I have the ground farm, I have uh, the vertical farms inside, and a rooftop farm. So instead of having one acre of land, I have one acre, then another acre on top, and mm -hmm. another acre, then on the roof I have you know. Have ten acres, you find, <laughs> and then uh, so there is also something called uh, we have skyscrapers in town, but we have sky. Uh, we have we have plant scrapers. So what you do is instead of building a skyscraper, a building like this, you you build such a building but to plant. Yes, that's that's it's called a plant scraper, and you also have sky sky sky, sky farm. This like a skyscraper, but now it's a sky farm. It's a tall building which is full of plants inside. So I think those, those are some of the testimonials mm -hmm. which are not practiced in Kenya, but which we can also practice. Because a lot of companies like Trigger, Trigger Foods, which have tried to go out of the way, they've done, uh, they do agricultural logistics. Mm -hmm. And those guys have begun, they began from us, they began I think from scratch. And right now those guys are, uh, on their website today, I could see they have 8,302 or seven vendors. Which shows you, if you, if you just begin, so I think if we begin, we can also be just one. That is very good. And actually, so that she mentioned about the farming, and I was watching, so of course not in Kenya, someone who planted uh, Irish potato in the market, in the market, like a laundry basket. They were so big. I was actually challenged. So you can actually start as easy as with the market and with the model. And those small things, I think the thing that becomes so fulfilling when you grow something and then it sprouts, mm -hmm. then you want to do more. So I think we can start from the simple things that we have. Um, just to wrap up our session, because it's always to, uh, coming to an end of our, our session, I'd like you to just, uh, what would you tell credit or say that? you still uh, finding a very new direction in agriculture. What would you tell what you're doing? Um, before I answer that question, just to add to what you said, you know now we have a lot of skyscraper empty buildings in, in Kenya. They are just wasting there. We don't even know their owners. You know, as youth, we can naturally take um, take um, that opportunity. We can take advantage of that and probably learn hands with the owner and plant something in there. We've heard stories of people that have tried that and it's actually working for them. So lack of access to land shouldn't be our challenge anymore because now there are so many innovations, there are so many strategies through which we can practice farming and we still make our full money. Um, to your question now, I'm a young person so I'll be advising myself. <laughs> so this advice is for all of us. I think um, the truth is that there is no job out there because population continue to grow arithmetically why opportunity in the non-agricultural sector continues to decline. And um, in Africa, this is, not expect this is not going to stop. Population will continue to grow. People continue to take more than one wife. And like in my family now, only my mom gave birth to seven. Yeah. Now, my, my family friend, they had nine. So, you see, population continues
continue to grow. So white scholar jobs are not there. So even if government comes out to create lots of jobs, it won't still be enough. So as young people, we shouldn't be, now when we go to school, it's just to acquire the knowledge. We shouldn't be taking towards that direction that, okay, when, once I graduate, I want to work for a firm, I want to, we should think of how we can become our own bosses. And the truth is that this sector, the agricultural sector, I'm so glad that I chose it, is one of the sector with the potential to create sustainable employment for a large number of people. So we should actually think outside the box. We should stop running after white collar job. The max they can pay is probably, I don't know your levels here, for level for a level eight worker is um how much yet? I don't know. In my country it's not even up to it's not up to one thousand dollars. For someone that has actually gone to school for four to five years, that means that you have spent about sixteen years pursuing education. Sixteen years and you come out and they are not even paying you up to one thousand dollars. But you can create your own employment. You can even employ other people and make one thousand dollars in a day. You can make one thousand dollars in a day. We've seen examples of people that are actually doing it, and they have succeeded. So we should tap into their success story and see how we can create opportunities for ourselves in the agricultural sector. Just identify your own niche and um, see what you can do. The truth is that even though people say there is no access to market, there are no market. The truth is that there are markets. There are market. It depends on the uniqueness of what you're doing. So we shouldn't follow the crowd now, but identify what people need. You have to do a need assessment. Once you do this, go into it, put all your trust, and the market is definitely going to come. Because people will not stop eating. People can stop doing any of that. I can wear this clothes for probably three days or four days. And um, even if people are saying that, that, is that, even if people are asking me if that is the only clothes I have, I'll tell them it's not their business. Is it not my body? <laughs> But can I sleep without food for more than three days? Personally, I don't think I can. I will die. <laughs> so, people will not stop eating. People will continue to eat. So, there are opportunities. We just have to tap into them. And I know that if you put your mind at it, we are, we are young, we are innovative, we like adventures, we want to learn new things, we will always be successful. That is great. Um, Tim? Chemistry can help me do gene editing because what you find nowadays we have tomatoes. I'm not sure. I don't know if you know that most of these tomatoes you see in the supermarkets, they've been altered such that those tomatoes can stay on the shelves for a very long time. It's called a uh, lava server tomato. So you may not know, but nowadays uh, science is taking a lot of uh, influence, making a lot of influence on agriculture because we have people in the lab who are spending time. To look at how can I alter this gene? How can I make this uh, avocado to be bigger? How can I make this watermelon to be sweeter? How can I make this orange not to have seeds? And uh, some of the some of the uh, of the or rather the accomplishments that have, been, that have happened in uh, this field is I'll give uh, examples of uh, we have something called golden rice. It's rice that has a golden color and has vitamins A added. We have um, those tomatoes that I, that, that I say. And very many other things that are coming up. We have even strider, strider free um, plants, which are, which are resistant to drought, and resistant to pests. We also have uh, a technology called uh, CRISPR or Cas9, uh, where uh, biochemists and biotechnologists are targeting specific genes. So if it is a gene for size, a gene for sweetness, a gene for color, for a nutrient. So when I go to school as a young person, instead of focusing on getting a job, let me focus on, uh, for example, go to school and get a job as a biochemist, a researcher in an institution. I'll probably earn, let's say, 50,000 for 100,000. But what if I went to the lab, 
researched and got a gene that cannot plant. How much more would I make? I would patent that gene, sell that gene, and make millions of money. So instead of looking at, let me get, let me clear school, then do my master's PhD and then get employed. Look at how can I clear school, then go back and do research and implement that knowledge I've, uh, I've gotten. You will ask me, I'm doing economics, so how is economics and agriculture region? And I'll tell you that I, once I'm done harvesting, I'll, I'll, I, need, I need your input because I need to know how the market, I need to know how, how the consumers respond. What is the demand and supply curve, how does it flow? So if you're doing, if you're doing let's say, PR, yeah, I mean, I, I, I probably need you so that you know how to communicate with those big companies. So all the courses that we are doing are related to agriculture. When, like you said, when we, we need to look at what is my niche in that agriculture? How can I come in without having to, you know, I don't have to come in uh, by digging, yeah. I don't have to come in by being employed. Yeah. So how can I come in and create jobs in agriculture? So I think if you can look at it from the right mindset of, let me come in and make a contribution, make an impact, you know, invent something. I think that's the way to go. Look at how can I bring technology into the typical family. That is the way to go. For every young person out there, for me and everyone else. Yes. That is very good uh, insight. And it's also a challenge to the institutions and the way they, they educate us. Because you go to class and there are only chapters and chapters you read and cram into the exam. So I think it's also a challenge to the institution and the systems of how they teach young people. When, they, when we come to the universities and we come to the learning institutions, bring to us what is happening outside of there and how our course is related to that point. So I think at that point, when someone is graduating, they're getting out of the market, not ready to be employed, but ready to apply what they've learned. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for your input. I think this is the time now we give you our audience a time to ask questions now to our guest today. So. If you have a question, can you feel free to ask me? Thank you so much. That's really a big concern. Thanks for raising that. But um, there's something we are trying to bring into agriculture now. So many countries have adopted it. I don't know if you have here in Kenya. It is called organic farming, whereby you don't use all these harmful um, chemicals to to pre to plant food or to preserve food. You know, at this point, I heard that um, the harpers we use they use formalin, yeah, to preserve it. Do you know what they use formalin for? Yeah. Yeah. So what we are encouraging now is organic farming. We want to go green and, and produce um, safe, safe food for the community. So the use of um, harmful pesticide and germicide and all those things are actually being dropped recently and we are going green. Just to add on that, um, I just remember that the other point is aquaponics. And yeah. aquaponics is very, is very helpful in terms of answering the question. That uh, aquaponics is where by you're using water to you have a greenhouse and you're using water to cultivate. So you're using water to raise uh, fish, then the fish uh, are going to you know produce nutrients in that water. So you use that water to plant your your, 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 your plants. So for us to overcome this challenge of uh, using uh, chemicals <coughs> in planting and you know that process, it is us the young people to come and be uh, you know, invent uh, techniques. Uh, because the people who are doing that are probably the backward people whose solution to pests was just uh, you know, getting, a, getting a chemical. Yeah. But as young people, we know better. We know that our solution is not to get chemicals because they're the same things killing us. They think, they are the things causing, uh, you know, causing yeah. cancer and GMOs everywhere. Yeah. It's because we refused as young people to take responsibility to go out there and try to adopt those, uh, the organic farming adopt those polyps into cultivation. So I think aquaponics would also be another very helpful solution to reducing the amount of chemicals used in, uh, in uh, agriculture. Okay. Yeah. Very comprehensive answer. You are satisfied? Yes. For coming in, for giving us such great insights. You are not any more, any more, but now you know. And uh, I think what I've really said uh, for me, and I think 
that applies to this that we made it, is um, there is a lot we can do in agriculture and there is so much we can we can get into if we decide if we focus on it because the population keeps on increasing like she said and what's going to happen in the next 10 years there's a lot of this population increase but there's no enough food to to cater for that population so there's a lot of investment we have to do in in, in, in agriculture but let's put in mind in most important thing that we have to do green farming it's very important we don't want to 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 alter the kind of food production that is there. We want to do clean green farming that is going to benefit people and not cause diseases at the end of the day. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that's a good tip of message. There's a lot to be done along the food supply chain. So if you're not in agricultural farming, you can do marketing. So don't sit there and feel like you're left out. Just look at the gap there along the food supply chain and tap on it. So thank you very much. This is the end of our show. Until next day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.